Hey everybody, it's time for another visualization assignment. So let's do this. This week's visualization is how to do regression, which is a bivariate display of two quantitative variables. And that's key. To make a scatter plot, you need two quantitative variables like height and weight. So let's start out, make our visualization, and then do some interpretation of it. So here we are with the instructions. As usual, we are going to use a data file from Jump, and then we're gonna take a random sample of 200 plus our UTID, the last two digits. So you'll have something like 223 or 258, all depends on the last two digits of your UTID. Now, the most important part of this is going to be that you need to include a screenshot right here with the regression line plus the regression output. You can take multiple screenshots. So we need to see both your regression and the regression output. The next thing you will need to do is you'll need to interpret the y-intercept with proper interpretation. And finally, you will need to interpret the slope. Additionally, you will need to tell if the relationship is statistically significant. So we basically have four key checkpoints right here. One, do you have the right screenshots? Two, did you interpret the intercept? Three, did you interpret the slope? And four, did you tell us if the slope is statistically significant? Doing all four of these will get you a great grade on this visualization. So let's get started on a little practice right here. Let's start with understanding what our regression equation in statistics is. We have here y hat, which is the predicted value of the y variable, equals to b0, which is the estimated value of the intercept, plus b1, the estimated value of the slope, times the x value we are using to predict y hat. You might be familiar with y equals mx plus b. Now, hopefully I'll make some more sense of this while we use b0 and b1 with some tricks to help remember them down below. Let's think about b0, which is the intercept here. When we look at the intercept, what we're talking about, when x is equal to zero, we expect y to equal b0. And listen how zero is said twice. When x is equal to zero, right here you see an x of zero, we expect y or predict y to be equal to b0. So this is the prediction for the intercept from the line right here. Next, when you think about the slope, let's see what the one unit increase looks like. We have a one unit increase right here. For each one unit increase in X, we expect Y to increase or decrease by B1. And this is what the slope is. You'll notice right here, there's a one unit increase in X, and this is what we expect to happen to Y. So we're using right here, the values of X to predict Y, and all of the line is making the predictions right here. So the slope is for each one unit increase. Now I must make clear, do not forget, always give context to your data. Do not forget to give the context. That is so key. If you're talking about height, then make sure to talk about inches. If you're talking about GPA, then talk about points on someone's GPA, but give the context to your data. When you see these answers right here, don't just use what we have written. Make sure with the underlined portions to fill in the context for each of your questions. So you'll need to change what is underlined to give it the context for each of your questions. Last but not least, we have statistical significance. And statistical significance relates to a p-value less than 0.05. So how do you know if something is statistically significant? The p-value is less than 0.05. And we have some general guidelines right here of what you might see for high or low p-values. When you see a low p-value, it is telling you that the line is statistically significant. And most importantly, we wanna look at the p-value for the slope and not the intercept. I'll show you where that's at in a moment right here. You'll notice that this p-value right here for the horizontal line of 0.80753, and we round it at the end to one, is actually not statistically significant. We'd say there is an insignificant relationship here between X and Y. There's no linear relationship. We do not have evidence of a statistically significant relationship. So let's go ahead and take a moment and look at the output right here and see what we can do. For your assignment, you'll be using the used car data set. Make sure to do your analysis on the used car data. I'll be doing my analysis on the roller coaster data. So let's open up the roller coaster data right here and take a look at it. Now we want to do a bivariate analysis and we want to do a scatter plot. So this can be done under analyze and then fit y by x. We want to choose two quantitative variables and I'm going to pick the y variable of speed. I want to know how fast the roller coaster goes. That's what I want to analyze. And then I'm going to see if the drop the roller coaster has will explain it. 
notice how the X's explain why this is happening. So when you think about an X variable, think, does the drop explain the speed of the roller coaster? Next, we can click OK, and we get a scatter plot right here. So with this scatter plot, it's important that we remember that scatter plots are described with strength, direction, form, and unusual features. The strength right here is moderately strong by how tight the points are around the form of it, and the form is linear. It's mostly a line. Next, we see that the direction is positive because the line goes upwards, and we have maybe mild outliers right here. We'll try to make it obvious on the test if there's strong outliers, but I'd say these are mild outliers, nothing too big right here. So this looks like a decent regression. Next, let's go in here and click the red arrow and go to fit line. With the line now fit, we can actually close one bit of analysis. Let's close the analysis of variance and we have everything we need to take a screenshot of. So make sure to take a screenshot of everything on the screen. You can use multiple screenshots. So make sure to screenshot the scatter plot, the regression equation, the summary of the fit, and the parameter estimates. So make sure to make your own screenshots right here, and then let's do the analysis. So now that you have the screenshots of your regression, let's walk through what's on the screen. Once again, we have the scatter plot showing us a visualization of the relationship. Next, we have the equation. This is what we saw earlier in the Word document. We saw y hat equals b0 plus b1x. And you'll notice right here, y hat equals b0 plus b1x. And that is the equation we are seeing right here. So that would make this, we are predicting speed. We have here b0, which is the intercept. We could trace this backwards right here to see where it hits zero. And it does look to hit a right around 35. Next, we have plus about 0.2, which is the slope. So when we do our interpretations right here of B0 and B1, it's very important that we do it in context. So I'm just going to use a rounded version of these numbers. But if you remember, my intercept was 35. So when the drop of the roller coaster is equal to zero feet, we would expect the speed of the roller coaster in miles per hour to be equal to 35. Notice the context. This is key. We're talking about a roller coaster that has a drop in feet, and we're talking about the speed it will obtain when it goes around the tracks. The context is key right here, and make sure to put in your variables and the context when doing interpretation. Next, we need to interpret the slope interpretation. And if you remember, just looking back again at my problem right here, you'll notice the slope is about 0.2. And of course, I'm going to say 0.2 rather than the whole number here, but let's give it an interpretation with the values of speed and drop, where speed is the y and x is drop. So you'll notice right here, for each one unit increase in feet for the drop of the roller coaster, because we're talking about the drop of the roller coaster being x, we'd expect the speed of the roller coaster to increase by 0.2 miles per hour. So there is this positive relationship between speed and drop of the roller coaster. Just make sure to use your context and put the words in there where they belong. Finally, we need to look at statistical significance. And we need to look at the p-value for the slope, not the intercept. And the p-value for the slope will be located right down here in the output. If you notice, we have the intercept, and we're not going to use the p-value for the intercept. We need to use this p-value right here, which is very small. If you actually hover over it, it'll actually tell you the p-value, and it's very, very, very small. It's uh, about 58 zeros or 57 zeros, and then you would achieve the first digit. So with this, this is a very statistically significant relationship, which means that we're seeing here is unlikely to happen by random chance. Now make sure to take your screenshots and do a full write-up and you'll do great.